Hi guys, Simply Betty here. I'm finally adding some livestock into my Fangorn Forest Aquascape. The Fangorn Forest Scape is a pet project of mine where I'm doing my best to recreate the dark, moody forest of Fangorn from Lord of the Rings. This is my first attempt at a big aquascape. I am loving the vibe Coming in here. Up, it's super spooky. I got some really great suggestions in the comment section of my last video. I hope you guys end up liking what I chose. Surprisingly though, I don't think anybody suggested what I would consider to be like one of the most obvious choices for a Fangorn Forest Lord of the Rings aquascape, which is a little surprising. Shame on you. I can't wait to show you what that is shortly. You'll be like, oh. Before my livestock even gets here, I'm still waiting on the UPS man right now. It really needed a cleaning. In my last video, I shared my algae woes that I was experiencing, which I blame on me getting really sick and just unable to do water changes for a couple weeks at the beginning stages of this tank. I started taking proper care of it once I recovered and the algae slowly diminished. So earlier this morning, I did a nice thorough cleaning and a water change in preparation for its new inhabitants. You've probably noticed I have a lot of wood in this tank, like a lot, which sort of makes it challenging to get all the glass nice and clean. So I have a couple tools that I've been using that have been working really well. I'm using a tool called the Aqua Blade. I have a few sizes of handles, like I have a big reaching one, I have a medium one, I have a little handheld one, and they all hold some various cleaning attachments like this Swiffer looking mop and a little plastic blade for acrylic tanks or delicate bits, a stainless steel blade for scraping, these have all really come in handy when it comes to cleaning the glass and getting around all of the ghost wood. Um, if you're planning on a complex aquascape with lots of wood, maybe consider something like this. I'll have the links down below. What is it about siphoning a tank with a python hose that is just so satisfying? I can feel all the stress leaving my body right now just watching this. Oh my God, the UPS man. The UPS man's coming. My fish just got delivered. I'm so excited. Um, but there's one more thing that has to be done before I can deal with the fish. I should have had this done earlier, but I was just focusing on the water change. Usually I get really nervous, like when it comes to shipping fish, but I don't feel nervous this time. These fish are coming from Dan's fish, which they do overnight shipping. They're really healthy, really well taken care of fish, so I'm not too worried about it. They're gonna be great. This one thing that I wanna do before I get to my Dan's fish delivery is adjust the water flow in my tank a little bit. Right now on this side of my tank, I don't have a lot of flow happening. It's kind of like us, this little dead space. I have mulm piling up back here. I have some detritus. To introduce just a little more flow, I got myself another CJ pump goes right here and it just introduces a little bit more flow. Yes, it's app controlled. I've been having way too much fun lately with app controlled electronics. You don't need to do app controlled stuff, guys. CJ is a really high quality manufacturer of pumps. They're Italian. They also have very normal pumps that are very affordable and not app controlled. Very cool. This is it. I can place this thing wherever I want it to go inside of my tank and there's this really strong magnet and then you can point it around. Perfect. It is doing great. In fact, I think it's a little bit too powerful. It's whipping up a lot of mulm and detritus in the tank and it's gonna be sending all of it towards my sump. It's gonna help me keep it all nice and clean, but I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. I set it up with my phone app and I turned the power way down and I like where it's at. Now that I got some of the just to-dos out of the way, like my water changing and my cleaning and now setting up that pump, I can actually get to the meat of this video, which is adding my livestock. Ah, look at this box. Look at it. It's my box from Dance Fish. This is so cool. Like I said, I'm not worried about this. It was overnight. There's live delivery. It's Dance Fish, healthy fish. I I'm excited. So I'm gonna show you what I chose and why, and I want you guys to tell me if you think it was a good choice for the Fangorn Forest Tank. Lift this out of the cardboard. Ah! <laughs>
Dan's Fish is an online retailer. He has a YouTube channel. I'll link to it down below. Here we go. So if you guys don't have access to like really good fish stores, let's face it, most of us don't. Most of us are stuck with Petco's and PetSmart's that are like two hour drives away, like me. Sometimes it can be hard to find good online sources of fish. And he takes really good care of his fish. They're all ethically sourced. They're all quarantined and treated and in really good condition before they're sold. And there's also a huge selection on dancefish.com. I gotta take care of a poop real fast. What a great time to interject and say that I've chatted with Dan's Fish and my viewers can get 5% off of a purchase of live fish shipped directly to you if you use the code Simply Better at checkout. Dan's Fish is awesome and the Dan's Fish channel is not only full of great fish nerd info but also frequent live stream giveaways. He currently has some cool wild betta species on the website and oh my god, pygmy sunfish. Whoever has those. Oh my gosh, I would have gotten some of those. Oh, it's a super cute US native fish that likes really similar water parameters as wild betta species. Low pH water. It's like Florida betta. Ah, uh, I'm getting distracted, sorry. That's a heat pack. Go upstairs. Thank you. My little boy's playing with his toy sword and he's just whacking stuff. Oh my goodness. I have a lot of little individually bagged fish. Oh, cool. I don't think I've ever seen uh, schooling fish packed this way. Usually they all come in like one big, one big, one big, what's the word? Bag, what's wrong with me? The word bag. But all of the little schooling fish that I got are individually packed. I just opened up my Chihiros app for my lights. I just turned the lights way down. When you're acclimating new fish, maybe turn the lights down. It's nice on their little eyes. I'm gonna pull fish out and just plop them to acclimate. This little guy right here in this bag, you can't really see him and there's just one because they're all packaged individually, like little fun size candy bars. This is a super cute, super tiny little ember tetra. I'm just gonna slowly be taking my little ember tetras and floating them in the tank and letting them come to temperature. I'm checking each one. They're all looking pretty good. I wonder if it's safer this way because the fish don't use as much oxygen if packaged individually like this. I don't know, I'm gonna have to ask Dan. <laughs> There's so many. I basically told him I wanted to get every single last Ember Tetra that he had available. So if you go and the Ember Tetras are gone, I might be why. <laughs> 24. There are 24 little individually packed ember tetras. It's gonna be so nice. That's not all I got though. I also have 10 beautiful little celestial pearl danios. I could not resist. CPDs are gorgeous, and I believe these are tank raised. Dan's Fish actually works with hobbyists and is able to like offer tank raised, domestically raised fish, which I think is very cool. Don't worry, little fella. You just wait. By the grace of the Valar, what shadowed land doth shelter me at this hour? All the bags are behind me now, just acclimating. I'll probably wait about 15 minutes and then I'll put the fish in. Ah, I also got a couple other things from Dan's Fish. They have a big variety of plants. And I also got one extra fish to not go in this tank, but to go into my fish room. This lovely lady right here, is a female albino paradise fish. Can't really see her, it's a white fish in a white bag, but I specifically requested if I could get a female paradise fish, and uh, Dan's fish came through, which was really, really nice of them. Because you can't always do that. Well, I'll go put her to acclimate in a tank in the fish room. I wanted just a few more Anubius Nana Petite, and it is really nice. Look at that nice, full plant. I'm very pleased. I also got some Hygrophila Corimbosa, don't know how to say that, compact. So I'll go get this into a tank. I actually quarantine my plants first now. I learned the hard way from a duckweed infestation that I should always quarantine plants. These don't look like there's any duckweed on them, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. I'll go take care of my plants and my beautiful female albino paradise fish. And then by the time I'm done, I'll probably put my fish in. I have like 10 minutes before I have to go get a kid from school. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the fish in and turn the lights off and just leave and let them relax. I just cut them open and I'm gonna pinch 
um, the bag closed and then I pour the water out. And then I just plop the fish in. Repeat this many times in the next 10 minutes. My attempts to actually get a shot of a fish gracefully exiting a bag was entirely unsuccessful. <laughs> oh well, now I'll just give them some time. The Amber Tetras and CPDs are being shy, which I totally understand. They're brand new here. Their colors have returned already, and I think they look really, really beautiful. They're exploring, and they look so nice and healthy. Now that you've seen my fish selection, I'll go over why I chose what I chose. And don't worry, my super obvious stocking choice that I keep teasing in this video is coming after, and it's so worth it. I knew from the start that I wanted a tiny schooling fish for the Fangorn Forest tank. Small fish are the only ones I'm considering because I want the scale of the trees to seem huge. If I had big fish in here, I feel like it would mess with the scale that I'm trying to mimic and the trees would seem really small in comparison. I want a schooling fish because I find them to be very peaceful to watch, moving as a group through the trees. I just love it. There are quite a few options for tiny schooling fish and the ones I considered most were these. Gold white cloud mountain minnows, cardinal tetras, platinum rummy nose tetras, and ember tetras. After really considering my options, I chose the Ember Tetra for their small size and their bright orange color. I love the orange on these fish. It contrasts so nicely with all the green in this tank. There aren't too many obviously thematic choices for stocking a Lord of the Rings themed tank. Let's be honest, it makes me wish there was such thing as a Goblin Tetra, maybe a Rider of Rohan Tetra. These Ember Tetras are more of a metaphorical representation of the burning fires of Isengard. The Celestial Pearl Danios look like juicy, sweet little trout, the kind Gollum was bashing against the rocks. All right, Taylor, you clickbaiter. Just tell us the stocking choice that you've been teasing us about in this video. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I don't think anyone suggested this one, I think. Sorry if you did. is the white wizard snail. The white wizard snail. If the fish species weren't perfectly thematic to a Fangorn Forest Lord of the Rings themed tank, the white wizard snail absolutely is. So that should make up for it. If you're not so cool as to understand what on earth I'm talking about, in the cinematic masterpiece, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, the broken up fellowship is in Fangorn Forest looking for the hobbits. And then Gandalf makes a grand re-entrance and startles everybody because they all thought he had perished to the Balrog. But he is no longer Gandalf the Grey, he is Gandalf, the white. The white wizard snail is so named because of its stylish shape. It looks kind of like a wizard's hat. It's also known by a few other names. Unlike Gandalf the White, I think, this snail's mostly a uh, algae and a detritus eater. Cool fact, it can also filter feed. They don't lay eggs, they actually give birth to live offspring, kind of like the Malaysian trumpet snail. Speaking of little baby snails, look at that, there's a baby snail. They're brown when they're little. They're really uncommon in the hobby. They're kind of hard to find. I'm hoping they just go crazy in this tank and I get so, so many of them because they're really cute. And then hopefully I'll be able to spread them around. I have stocked the tank for now. At the time of filming this, I actually have to wait a few more weeks um, to get the creature, the next creatures um, that I'm putting in here. So I guess that'll be in my next update. Thank you so much for watching guys. Thanks to my lovely patrons for throwing like a dollar or more at me every single month. You guys really help me buy supplies and I really appreciate your support. Tell me in the comments below, do you like what I chose? Did I, did I miss a different stocking choice that's like super obvious or did I do a pretty good job? Have a great day and I'll see you next time.